Welcome to Artist Talk. I'm Colin Jones. Toronto is a city that thrives on music, with countless iconic venues and tons of local acts to fill them. Indeed, from an outside perspective, it may seem like a perfect place to launch a musical act. But how do you stand out in a market so saturated with talented performers? And beyond that, how does an artist find commercial success? If commercial success is what you're looking for. Jordan Mason has been making music in this city for over 10 years and has continued to innovate and draw attention from around the world with each release. Thank you for being here, Jordan. Thanks for having me. So, you have an incredibly intricate and unique lyrical style. Uh, you sing about topics such as gender dysphoria, abuse, and other uncommon topics. Um, and I haven't heard any of these elsewhere. Uh, what is your writing process like? Uh, I mostly write uh, one sentence at a time <laughs> in notebooks uh, until eventually I have lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of sentences or images or whatever, and then I sort of have to figure out how to structure them together so that they rhythmically make sense lyrically, you know, um, but still tell a story. It takes a long time. <laughs> okay. And um, you describe yourself on your Bandcamp page as a human mess who sings semi-literate songs about sex and sickness and the end of the world. Uh, as someone who identifies as neither male nor female, how does your identity make its way into your uh, lyrics and music? I think it just kind of happens naturally. You kind of, I mean, I write about what I know, uh, or at least what I think I know or what I want to know. Um, so I really only write about things that I'm experiencing that are real and true to me. Um, and part of my experience is that I don't feel like I fit into the gender binary. Um, so I've tried to address that in my music. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm successful with it and other times it's a little harder because uh, I talk to people sometimes and they, they don't think that that's present in the music and it, you know, it's one of those things where like, uh, depending on who's listening to it, they're gonna get different stuff out of it. Um, that's maybe not even what you intended, but um, that's kind of one of the coolest things about it is that people can sort of take what they need from it. Um, yeah. Right. Um, <clears throat> do you ever feel like you're speaking for like a larger community? Like you have to somehow think about that when you're, when you're writing stuff and performing? Uh, I try not to because uh, I think it's really dangerous when people think that they can speak for a community at large as an individual person within a community. Um, that being said, I obviously have certain things that are important to me politically that I want to get across, but um, I f would just say those things straight out if that was what I was trying to do, and I'm not necessarily trying to do that. I'm trying to sort of talk about the confusion that I'm experiencing around my politics um, and around my identity. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> now, shifting to the sonic qualities of your work, um, your older material has, I'd say, a primarily folky sound, um, contrasted with your 2015 record, which has elements of other genres like post-punk, um, and you also put out an album of ambient tracks last year. Uh, how important is it to you to keep your music style uh, changing and keep it interesting? I mean, I'm just changing, so the music sort of reflects that. Um, the I guess the folk thing was like really more about uh, what was available to me at the time. I had a guitar and I had a pin microphone, you know, like that you would use to Skype with someone. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I was like, okay, I'll make a record with that. Uh, and uh, as I kept working and, uh, and such, I sort of got access to more and more things that I could make different sounds with. Um, and I'm interested in making different kinds of sounds. Um, it was really fun, for example, to make a record last year that has no singing and no lyrics on it, uh, because for a long time I felt like I'm not really a musician because I am just playing usually two chords uh, at a time. And for me, it was more about what I was saying um, and that like, you know, singing a song in front of someone was really just a vessel to say those things in front of someone without having to just like read a poem in front of someone, which makes me want to like freak out and cry, you know, because it's like 
to, you know, <laughs> like if you have an instrument between you and the people that you're performing to, then um, it kind of feels like you're a little bit protected. Um, but uh, yeah, so it was really exciting for me to try to like say something through just sounds. Okay. Now, you've attracted attention from people around the world uh, through the internet and through touring internationally as well. Uh, but when you play shows in Toronto, not many people show up. Uh, how important is it to you to have a local fan base? Uh, well, I've been here for 10 years, so it's, it's kind of been up and down. There have been periods of time where uh, the shows have been quite successful here and periods of time where they're pretty quiet. Um, a lot of that is due to the fact that, like, you know, uh, at a certain point, people come to understand that like you live here so they could see you any time. And so it's not quite as uh, uh, necessary that they go to every show. Whereas if you're touring, you know, people make it more their business to come out and see you because they might not get to you another time. Okay. Um, now, last summer you toured around Europe with Crywank. As I said, uh, you've done some international touring. Um, how do the international audiences compare to those at home? Like, are there any different reactions to your music? Uh, I feel like when I was over in Europe, I got treated a little bit more like I'm famous than I'm used to because I had made such a far trek to come play those shows. So people sort of understood the reality of that, that, you know, it costs quite a bit of money to fly across the ocean. And, um, and so, uh, and, and I hadn't ever been over there before, um, not even to travel. Uh, so uh, people, I think, understood and respected that. And as such were kind of, they treated me a little bit more like you're a real musician <laughs> than maybe here. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Jordan. I appreciate uh, you taking the time today. For sure. Really appreciate that. Uh, Jordan Mason is a Toronto musician whose songs about queer issues and sexuality are both hard-hitting and refreshing. You can hear their album Divorce Lawyers I Shaved My Head on jordanmason.bandcamp.com. You were out on time. All right. So great job. Sweet. Great cool. Job, All right. <clears throat> I hope that was